the best areas for doing serviced accommodation. Hello and welcome to the Property Unleashed YouTube channel. My name is Mark Fitzgerald. So a question that I get asked all the time is where is the best area to do serviced accommodation, whether it's rent to rent, whether you want to buy properties or whether you just want to manage the properties yourself or do some JVs. It's a question that gets asked all the time. So that's why I want to cover it here. And realistically, and this probably isn't the answer that you want to hear, but serviced accommodation can work anywhere. Now bear with me, you're going to say, oh, blame me. That doesn't really help me. So let's go through five different scenarios and I can explain to you why serviced accommodation can work pretty much anywhere. But you need to know what you're looking at. You need to also understand your numbers, your clientele, and of course your property types. Those are all the main things that you need to make sure that you have in place to be successful and this is what we help people with on the ultimate serviced accommodation business builder training program so before i start if you would like the 10-step free guide in serviced accommodation of how to set yourself up and find deals for yourself then please visit thepropertyunleashed.com and you can download your free copy there but let's get started here so the first thing that you want to consider is what sort of clientele do you want to have staying in your properties. And a lot of that can be very, very dictated to by where you are. So obviously, if you're in a seaside resort, you could be looking pr primarily, easy for me to say, you could be looking for holiday makers. So you may be looking for your flats, your apartments. You could be looking at static holiday homes. Crikey, you could even put a tent in a field and then rent it out for the night. So you know what I mean? Anything can be done in any sort of situation and area. But if you're in just a normal town, and you're thinking to yourself, I can't do service accommodation because there's no beach here, there's no amusements, there's nothing. There is always, going to be opportunities for you to be able to do serviced accommodation and one of the good telltale signs that people want to stay in your area is hotels if you have hotels where you live if you have hotels in a in a mile two mile vicinity of where you want to set up a serviced accommodation it's a very very good mark that you're in the right place for it to work of course you can check air DNA and see what people are charging, see how people are operating. You can of course check booking.com, Airbnb themselves, see what people are offering in the areas that you're looking at. And also figure and factor in the people that you want to have in your properties. Loads and loads and loads and loads of people. The common trend is get an apartment, get a two bed house, something like that something that people can rent out for the weekend. But I'd like you to try and twist that around a bit and maybe look at this a bit differently. Look at it from a more professional business standard. And that's what I always say. If you're getting into property, you wanna be treating it as a business, setting yourself up for success. So of course, you might be in a great location where there is beach, amusements, arcades. There could be stadiums around. Maybe there's football stadiums and people will want to stay at a premium to, for ease and comfort when there's a football match on or a concert on or something like that. Those are all great things to look for, but they're easy to see. Sometimes you can spot some real little gems that people will want to stay in just in the areas where you are, where you live even. And never underestimate where people will want to stay and how long they'll want to stay for as well so have a look at what your area has going for it okay you know you can look at your town and city because you live there and you see everything every day it might not mean anything to you but there may be certain features of your town city or where you live even if you're in the middle of the countryside that's perfect at the end of the day somebody will probably want to stay there but you don't want the somebody probably will want to stay there. You want certainty that people will stay there. So it's about making sure that you're looking for things that are maybe unique to that situation and then doing your research to see if other people have already set something up, if there's a hotel in the vicinity 
or anything like that that can give you an idea and also check the planning portals as well and see for any potential hotels that may be getting built in the future in the areas that you're looking because that is a, such a fantastic sign that this is a great place for serviced accommodation to work because there's demand. People or companies do not build hotels on a whim. They spend thousands, hundreds of thousands on research to make sure that when they build potentially a multi-million pound complex or hotel that it's actually going to give them a return on their money. They don't just spring them up because they think there's no hotels around here. They spring them up and they put them in place to make sure that they can get their return. And of course, you may not be looking at having the same market as the hotel. So I've, ha I've seen hotels that have been uh, built basically for the contractual market. They probably don't have that many people staying there at the weekends, although they will have a flow here and there because they're there. But it's normally Monday to Friday, and you'll find that their rates are actually more expensive in the week than they are actually at the weekends. I see this because I travel around the country a lot as well. I do a lot of viewings, I do a lot of public talks, I do a lot of training. So I'm always in and out of hotels, and it absolutely boggles me that if I want to do something midweek, it'll cost me more than it will if I actually wanted to stay there at the weekend. And that's because that's the fundamental parts of their trade. They've got some good contractors there. They've got people working in the, in the areas, uh, or they've got local businesses as well that are bought into it. And you can do the same in your serviced accommodation business. So just make sure you know whether your area is going to be seasonal for your profits and stuff, whether it's a tourist place. So will it be busy in the summer months, you know, spring, summer, autumn potentially, but it's going to be quiet over the winter periods? Or is it going to have events in the area? As I said before, is there stadiums there? Is there, is there certain outdoor activities or, or anything there, amusements, anything, even a theme park? that can bring people in. But again, it might be a seasonal place. But some of the guests that I love the most are contractors. The guys and girls that stay potentially a Monday to a Friday. You know, a lot of my units don't actually have anybody in at the weekend because they are just there for contractors. We have a steady flow of contractors staying Monday to Friday, and that gives us all the profits we need with no partying because they're just there to lay their head down and sleep and it doesn't cost you a massive amount to make sure that these are premium places. Yes, they want to be good, they want to be nice, they want to be somewhere you'd stay yourself, but it don't need to be the creme de la creme, the Ritz, the penthouse. They just need to be something really nice. When you walk in, you think, this is nice and tidy, I'm happy. I can make something to eat, I can get my head down, and I can crack on with my work because that's what I'm actually here to do. Those are the best guests that I think you can have personally in service accommodation because there's less noise, people don't get disturbed who live in the vicinity of, these, of your properties, people don't go in there to have parties and wreck the joint, uh, and it just basically, they come, they, they, they do their bit, they live there, but the hassle is really, really minimal. And that's what you want in your business as well. You don't want massive, massive headaches. You have to make sure you look after these companies. You have to look after these people the same as you would with anything else. In fact, if anything else, you really want to look after these guys and girls better because they are a steady flow once you start having them coming in, staying in your properties. So once you've got your area nailed, you want to know Am I going to make some money? The numbers have to stack. So then it's all about really looking at your rates. Now, of course, you can do your homework again, as I say, on AirDNA, Airbnb, Booking.com. You can look at hotels. You can look at everything to give yourself a nightly rate. But most people always look at a premium nightly rate or they'll look at the weekend or, the, you know, Saturday night, Friday nights. They'll look at that sort of thing. What I would say to you is have a look at what the nightly rate is Mondays to Fridays. Okay, more than anything else when you're starting this out because everybody wants to look at the top dollar. What can I earn? What can I make? And this is where I actually see people falling into a trap and making mistakes in their numbers because they're always looking at the premium night. They may be trying to average it out a bit, but if you look at the less premium times and you base your numbers on that and you do a 50% occupancy, a 75% occupancy, and you're looking at those thinking, well, if nothing else, if I do a rent to rent on this or if I do a management on this, I mean, management's great anyway because you're just going to take your percentage. But if I was doing a JV with on this as well, and I'll do other videos on how you can do these different strategies, 
you can actually make sure that you limit your, your costs, you limit your risk, and you maximize your profits as well. So make sure that you're not just looking at the best. I know a lot of people will say, take an average of this, but I would just say, look at what is the steady figure. You don't need to take an average of the best and the worst. If anything, stack it on the worst. Stack it on what you really, basement level, this is, if I only made this, would it still stack? Because you know that if it does still stack and you can get the occupancy there, you're onto a winner. Winner, winner, and that's what it's all about. Don't just average it out. Well, you know, it's seasonal, so in the good months, we're gonna, we're gonna earn this, and in the bad months, or potentially we're not gonna have anybody in there, it's gonna be this. Just get a, a happy medium, get a steady away for the area, and you will be onto a winner when it comes to your numbers because your occupancy will only get better. So even at the beginning when things and times could be slow, getting this set up, getting people in, you're only gonna get stronger, it's only gonna get better, you're only gonna get all repeat customers as well. So another little trick that I'll share with you now is to look at local businesses in the area that you're looking to have your serviced accommodation and see if there's any businesses there that may potentially need a short stay accommodation. That may need a bit of help. Now, great businesses to look at are estate agents, is to speak to estate agents. Why? You might be saying, why? What's a estate agent gonna do? They're selling properties. Now, the market right here, right now, if you look at the date when this was recorded, it's tricky. It's tricky, there's a lot of sales falling through, okay? There's a lot of people there trying to sell their properties, they're all in chains, boom, boom, boom. We're getting ready to sell, everything's looking good, and all of a sudden, somebody has to pull out. Somebody can't get their mortgage. Somebody can't afford to buy this property anymore. Is happening day on day. And somebody who thinks they've sold their property and has maybe bought another property or maybe they're having another property built or waiting for a property to be built, ready to move in, has had the rug pulled from under them, need somewhere to stay. They don't want to not buy what they're buying, but they may need to sell their house again. And they just do not want to not buy this property. They've got a heart set on it. And that's what most people buy with emotion. They get their heart set on something and they'll do whatever they can to make sure that happens. So if you go into the estate agents and say, I've got short term accommodations, it's a three bed house, a two bed house, a four bed house, a two bed apartment. If you have anybody that needs to maybe rent a place for a month or two while they're selling their property or three, we can do so. It means that they don't necessarily have to put everything into storage. That all they'd have to do is put a bit of furniture in storage, they can move straight into our property and they can rent it out for a month or two or something like that. And for you, that is absolutely brilliant because you get then a couple of months of people in your property, steady cash flow, that's what it's all about. You get in with a couple of estate agents and start making this happen, you're onto a real winner. And even if you've got an apartment, it's still worth saying if you've got one person or a couple, or maybe a couple and a small child that just needs somewhere to be put up, we can do so on a month by month, week by week, day by day basis. And of course, you've got companies that will have workers that will come in and maybe work on a three month contract, a six month contract. You wanna be speaking to businesses and just asking them, do you have people coming into the area that maybe need accommodation? You don't really wanna be putting those up in a hotel so you could block book our serviced accommodation unit for your per clientele, for your worker, for whoever's coming into the area. It's always worth reaching out to these people. It's always worth seeing if you can work with them as well. And if they're local to the area, they're gonna be more inclined to work with somebody local to that area as well. And some people will just be looking to relocate. So they may have got a job, then they may be needing to go into the area to start work. Maybe they've just left home, or maybe they've just come out of a relationship, or maybe they have sold their property and haven't got anything else to move into, but they're going and having a fresh start somewhere. Then you, it's worth speaking to businesses in your area to say, have you got anybody that's likely to be relocating, anybody that's coming into the area? And of course, you can even have that in your adverts when you're advertising your properties as well. If you're looking and you need to relocate, but you need somewhere on a short-term basis, then basically we can help you, we can put you up. And of course, you offer a discount 
for the longer stays. So how do you know how much to offer and things? Well, it's worth just inquiring with local service accommodation providers in your business and seeing if they offer discounts. If they offer, if they jump to the chance and offer discounts, then that can be a sign that what they're doing, they may be struggling with a bit. If they're reasonable with their discounts, then that's just good business. So don't read too much into these things. And of course, network, get out there, go to networking events, property networking events, speak to people who are doing serviced accommodation and get the idea of how they're performing and what their struggles are in the area. A lot of people will be happy to share that with you. Take some of it with a pinch of salt because if they know you're going to be getting into serviced accommodation, they might be thinking, well, I don't want more competition in my area, so I'll just tell them it's rubbish. So I wouldn't go in there necessarily saying, well, this is what we're starting at, this is what we're doing, but just chat to people and potentially they could be your competition. But you know what? There's so many people that say, oh no, there's so much competition. You know in service accommodation, competition is what you want. Competition is good business. Why is it good business, Mark? Because at the end of the day, let's just say for argument's sake, somebody's relocating into your area. Your unit is now taking up for a couple of months, you've got another unit because you're successful and you're listening to this channel, so you're doing well. You've got another unit which has got your block bookings in and things like that, seasonal that one, seasonal. All of a sudden, somebody else wants to do a block booking and you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't taken those. But anyway, I have and I can't actually facilitate this person. You go to your rivals and you say to them, have you got anything where we can put this person up? They're looking for this sort of thing. They liked our two, two, two bed flat. Have you got any two bed flats or anything like that? They're willing, you know, we've negotiated the price. We take a little car that, you take the rest, the lion's share, happy days. And if the same thing happens to you and I can help you, we'll do the same. You take a cut, I'll put them in my property and take the lion's share, but it's good business. Everybody's making a win. You're making a win, they're making a win, and so is the person that wants to stay in the property. And this is how you build a successful, sustainable property business right here and right now. I hope this episode has helped you. Again, we have the 10-step rent-to-rent guide, the 10-step service accommodation business builder guide. We have training, coaching, we have support in every which way you can want it at the end of the day. So visit thepropertyunleashed.com, download any of the guides, feel free to reach out to me on social media, Instagram or Facebook, feel free to message me, DM me, I will never message you first, so if it is somebody who looks like me messaging you, it's not me, but if you message me, I will talk to you, okay? My team is here to help. Again, if you've enjoyed this, feel free to share it, like it, subscribe, leave a comment, Do what you want to do. Leave a five-star review if you want to. But no, it's been great having you. Join me on this video. I look forward to you joining me on the next video where I'm going to share more helpful tips in property, rent-to-rent, serviced accommodation, PLOs, deal sourcing, you name it. We're out there doing it, living it, breathing it. So join me in the next video and bye for now.